Hello, my name is Jet Smith, and welcome to another topic lecture. This lecture will be for the November-December Lincoln-Douglas debate topic, which is the People's Republic of China ought to prioritize environmental protection over economic growth. You might also hear this referred to as the China topic or the environment versus economy topic. So in this lecture, we are going to do four things. First, we'll discuss the resolution and break it down into its essential components. Then we'll talk about different value frameworks that you could read. And then we'll talk about pro arguments and con arguments or affirmative arguments and negative arguments. So first part, let's discuss the resolution in five main ways. Trichotomy, definitions, background, core controversy, and stakeholders, which is a process you should apply to all resolutions you see to make sure that you understand them before you start the research process. So first thing we need to discuss is trichotomy. Now trichotomy is the idea that there are three types of topics, policy topics, fact topics, and value topics. Policy topics are claims of action, value topics are claims of judgment, and fact topics are claims of truth. So this topic is not evaluating stuff that already happened in the past or predicting that what will happen, which means that it is not a fact topic. But this topic has something unique about it, and that is that it is both a policy topic and a value topic. It has an actor, which is China, and it says ought and an action, which is prioritizing one thing over another, which makes it a policy topic because we have an actor doing an action. But it's also comparing the value of two different things, environmental protection and economic growth, making it a value topic as well. So second is definitions. What are the important parts of this resolution? And I would see that there are three main things we need to make sure we understand the definition. First, we have prioritize, which is to treat one thing as having higher importance than another thing. So just because we're prioritizing one thing over the other, it doesn't mean that the other thing completely goes away. It just means that if we have to make a choice or if we are looking at the two things side by side, we assign higher importance at some level to one over another. So second, we have environmental protection, which is preventing unwanted damage or change from human activities to ecosystems. So the affirmative will be saying we should prioritize that over economic growth, which is the increase in production of goods and services measured over time, often through gross domestic product or GDP. So the affirmative will say that we need to prioritize environmental protection over economic growth. The negative needs to say we ought not prioritize environmental protection over economic growth. So how did we get here? Why are we debating this topic? That's why we need to discuss the background. Some things to know is that China has been the fastest growing economy in the world since the 1990s, but it has slowed down since COVID started due to you know, the economic challenges of COVID. China's really trying to keep COVID to a minimum. And also the People's Republic of China is just the name of the country. It would be like if a resolution said the United States versus the United States of America. Uh, so it's just the full name. So you don't need a specific definition for that. But the People's Republic of China is different than the Republic of China, which is Taiwan. So the People's Republic of China is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, but isn't really communist. It's a mix of state-owned and private-owned enterprises. And China's economy has grown and it has grown really fast. 800 million people have been lifted out of poverty. But over the past 40 years, this growth has been really destructive to the environment in China in a lot of different ways. And President Xi Jinping said earlier this year that we should not sacrifice one over the other. So China is now attempting to do both. And yet it is clear that it is not going perfectly in either side, the environment or the economy. So a lot of people are arguing that a prioritization is in order. So what is the actual controversy in this resolution? What is the core of it? If you had to simplify this down to its most basic elements for a judge, what is at stake here? And that is probably one of these two questions. One, is the environment more important than the economy, which is pretty clear it's in the topic, but more specifically, should the government focus on long-term sustainability or short-term gains? Long-term sustainability is more in line with the environment issues, whereas short-term gains is more in line with the economic growth issues. Finally, under resolutionary analysis, who is at stake based off of the decision in this discussion. What happens if China prioritizes its environment or not? Well, there are three main groups. Uh, first, it would be China's natural resources, animals, and ecosystems. Then I would say that it's China's citizens, businesses, and political leaders. And finally, is that China's decisions as one of the largest countries in the, or the largest country in the world and one of the largest economies in the world 
uh, is that their decisions will have an effect on the global environment as well as on citizens living in other countries and businesses that trade with China. So now that we've broken down the resolution itself, let's discuss how we can get the judge to evaluate it through value frameworks. This is going to have three parts to it. First, we'll talk about the two values in the resolution, either morality or governmental legitimacy is what I would recommend. Then we'll talk about criterions for morality, and then we'll talk about criterions for governmental legitimacy. So this resolution has two of the three main values uh, that we see in Lincoln Douglas, those being morality, governmental legitimacy, and justice. That would be viable options based on the wording of the topic. You could use the more uh, morality because of the word ought implying a moral obligation. So that would be a perfectly fine value. Or you could also value governmental legitimacy because the resolution is a question of what the government should do. So it all just depends on what you would rather value. Morality is probably the more typical value, but governmental legitimacy might be one that if you want to force a value debate with your opponent that you choose to read because you plan on your opponent reading morality. So if you go with morality, what are the different ways that you can measure it? Obviously, there are more than just these, but these five criterions stand out to me as useful, easy to measure, easy to understand ways to measure the achievement of this standard that will also help you gain offense on this topic. So you could, if you wanted to go the utilitarianism route, then you could phrase your criterion as maximizing expected well-being. If you want to go for big shtick impacts about like climate change or disease, uh, or biodiversity, then I would recommend this one. If you want to read a case all about how China's decisions affect other people, then you could talk about maximizing the welfare of others using the philosophy of altruism. Uh, if you want to focus on how environmental impacts usually hurt those that are marginalized, so racial minorities uh, and the people like living in poverty, then helping the least well off would probably be a good framework to use. You could also use the framework of helping the least well off to talk about how economic growth most often just benefits a select few individuals who get richer. You could also, if you wanted to read uh, more deontological arguments, you could talk about fulfilling one's foundational duties, one of which is beneficence. So you could talk about under Rossian deontology, the idea that whenever we make decisions, we need to ask ourselves if it's falling in line with our duties. And you could argue that uh, through your case that prioritizing the environment or prioritizing the economy will help fulfill those duties. And then you could also talk about respecting people as ends, not seeing people in a piece of a game or trying to use them for some greater goal, which would be Kantian ethics or Kantianism. All of these criterions would work as the affirmative or as the negative. I think that the helping the least well off probably works really well for both of them, just because you can talk about how on the affirmative, like I said, the environmental impacts hurt people who are already marginalized the most, but also economic growth, you could say we need to prioritize to help those people living in poverty who are the least well off improve their standing in society. Uh, I also think just utilitarianism, maximizing expected well-being as always is a good one. The only issue with reading that is chances are it will be very easy for your opponent's offense to also apply to your criterion, which means that you're going to have to do more like magnitude, time frame, probability weighing instead of just getting to frame your opponent out of the debate. If you choose to go with governmental legitimacy, you also have a couple of options that I think would work particularly well as for as a criterion goes. First, you could do a criterion of protecting citizens or following along with Thomas Hobbes contractarianism. Uh, you could also do another form of contractarianism that comes from Rawls, which is helping the least well off. Again, you just say instead of doing it because it's the most moral thing, you say China should do it because it's what will make them a legitimate government. You could also read, I think these two work better as the, like the third one works better as the negative, the fourth one works better as the affirmative. Ensuring consistency with the minimal states libertarianism, you could say that prioritizing economic growth means reducing China's control over the uh, state's economy, which would be decreasing government involvement and intervention. And then, or you could say that China's constitution basically says that they should be a socialist state that focuses on in its environment, not just economic growth. And then it should be like, grow, it should be for the sake of everyone. And so you could argue that affirming is consistent with China's constitution. And how do you know if a government's legitimate if it's following through with its constitution? 
So this gives you two different values that you could read, morality or governmental legitimacy. Yes, people will read different values, but those values won't be grounded in the wording of the resolution. And then you have multiple different ways that you could choose to measure your value based off of what offense you want to do. My recommendation would be picture yourself giving your last rebuttal. What is the argument that you want the judge to vote for you on? And then figure out which value and which criterion makes that argument look the strongest. Uh, rather than doing it the other way around. So now that we've discussed frameworks, let's talk about the best affirmative arguments that you could read on this topic. I have nine ideas for arguments that you could read. I put them in alphabetical order, so these are not listed in order of best to worst or anything like that. But keep in mind that every one of these arguments is going to be a reason why we must prioritize environmental protection over economic growth in China. Now, the affirmative might be able to argue that environmental protection creates economic growth. The problem is, in order for you to prove that you are prioritizing, you must show that environmental protection is more important, which some might argue means that you have to prove that if it's a choice of one or the other, we have to choose environmental protection. So you should be ready to explain on each of your affirmative arguments why this forces a choice, because otherwise the negative will say, you're not proving why we need to prioritize, you're just saying the environment is important. But with that, the first affirmative argument area would be air pollution. Each of these arguments I'm going to break down into their uniqueness, link, and impact storyline so that it will help you frame a more complete case. So remember, uniqueness is basically what's going on right now or what happened in the past. Link is uh, what will change based on the resolution and impact is why does it matter? So the affirmative's uniqueness is usually going to say, here's an environmental problem we're currently experiencing. Link will be why prioritizing the environment would solve that problem and impact is why it matters. So on this first argument of air pollution, you are going to argue that economic growth has increased the pollution of air thanks to a whole bunch of different industries that have driven economic growth in China and that that is really bad. And then you're going to say that if we prioritize the environment, we will have less pollution, whether it be because we shut some of these industries down or we force them to comply with different regulations and standards, we transition to different industries. And then the impact is that air pollution causes cancer and harms the economy. There's a lot of other impacts from air pollution as well. But you would basically say that the reason why we need to prioritize the environment is so that we can decrease air pollution. Another argument would be about animals in general, although there are lots of different arguments you could read underneath this. So the uniqueness would be saying things like animal rights or biodiversity, the number of species or endangered species are currently being harmed by economic growth. You could say that animals aren't necessarily given the same legal framework of rights in China as they are in some other countries, that China's biodiversity has been rapidly decreasing thanks to economic growth over the past four decades, or that endangered species are currently still getting sold in like black markets across China, which causes things like COVID. Uh, but economic growth is kind of the driver of those things, is what you'll argue. The link is that when we prioritize the environment, we shut down illegal markets of animals, we try to decrease poaching, and we make efforts to restore animal populations and biodiversity. And then your impact could either be something along the lines of like animal rights. Uh, or you could talk about the impact of biodiversity, having a high number of species is crucial to preventing food chain disruptions, leading all the way up to human extinction if you want to go that far. Another AF argument area is climate change. This is a big one. I think it's probably going to be the biggest affirmative argument because China is a huge contributor to climate change. And it's pretty undeniable that that is because of economic growth, or at least it has been. So your uniqueness argument is that economic growth increases greenhouse gas emissions, which makes climate change worse. The link is that when we prioritize the environment, China will stop trying to grow its economy if it's going to increase the greenhouse gas emissions and make climate change worse. Maybe it means we switch to renewable energy solutions. Maybe it means China signs on to more international agreements. Uh, and then the impact is if we don't have climate change, it's going to cause mass death and suffering, potentially ending in extinction. A fourth argument that the affirmative could talk about is coal pollution. Uh, this is an argument that was common on the water topic for policy debate last year. So the uniqueness argument is that China's economic growth is being driven by energy from burning coal. China has more power plants powered by coal than I believe any other country in the world. And while they are kind of trying to decrease their reliance on them, it's not happening fast enough, according to a lot of people, or it's not really happening at all. 
So your link is that when we protect the environment, we're going to transition away from coal so that we can stop all of the negative impacts of that. And so the impact to coal pollution, it pollutes water resources, it spreads respiratory disease. There's all sorts of medical impacts in particular that come from coal pollution. Fifth is deforestation or cutting down land uh, that was forest to make room for other projects. So right now, China's economic growth is involving clearing forests so that they have more room to like feed animals uh, and also for agricultural purposes and also to build more housing and building projects to like increase urbanization. The link is that when we protect the environment, we stop trying to do deforestation for the sake of building more economic tools. And then the impact would be that deforestation destroys habitats for animals, and it also decreases the ability for forests to like lock in carbon. And, you know, trees are important for air quality. Trees are important for trying to stop climate change. So deforestation is pretty bad. Sixth area that you could talk about as the affirmative is e-waste. You could talk about how uh, e-waste is electronic waste. First on uniqueness, China is leading the world when it comes to technology, but that means that all of the technology they produce creates a lot of e-waste. When we prioritize the environment, instead of trying to make products as cheap as we can so that we can make more money off of them, even when it's bad for the environment, it means that we will make products that are built to last longer, so we have to throw them away less often, or it means that we have to make our products more expensive so we can use more sustainable materials. So the idea is when we prioritize the environment, we decrease uh, the amount and also the harm of e-waste that we are producing. And then the impact is that e-waste pollutes water, it wastes rare earth minerals, and it causes uh, disease. Seventh argument area I think the affirmative could talk about is food shortages. So food shortages are becoming a problem all over the world, largely because of disruptions to the supply chain caused by the Russia-Ukraine war. But China is also experiencing food shortages as a result of economic growth harming its natural resources, causing things like desertification, where an area that had fertile soil or the ability to produce food turns into largely a desert, uh, and soil pollution, where the nutrients in the soil are being stripped away or are being tarnished by uh, harmful chemicals. So the link would be that when we protect the environment, we stop doing the things that cause desertification, we stop doing the things that cause soil pollution, we try to reverse and clean up those processes. And then the impact is that food insecurity or what happens when there's not enough food to go around is really bad because it causes starvation, it decreases national unity, uh, it causes political uprisings. So you just argue food shortages are not good for China. Eight is natural disasters. So natural disasters are happening more often in countries all over the world, including China, much of which is coming from climate change, which is human caused. But there are also just shorter term decisions that we make, like where we build dams and where we build our cities and what projects we do uh, that can also cause natural disasters or magnify the impact to natural disasters when they happen. Or at the very least, we need to be prepared for the natural disasters that are happening more often because of climate change that we're causing. So your uniqueness argument is that natural disasters like floods and landslides are becoming more common in China, largely due to human causes, but also from climate change. Then you argue that when we focus on the environment, we invest in the technology and in the infrastructure needed to make sure that we can adapt to these problems like floods and landslides. Uh, or that we stop doing the economic activities that cause them in the first place, both of which would hurt our economic growth potentially, which is why we have to prioritize the environment. And then the impact is that natural disasters cause death and hurt the insurance industry. Because when everyone is having their homes get destroyed by natural disasters, then the insurance companies have to give out all the money that they've been getting so that they can pay to repair all of those things. And that's bad for the economy and cost jobs. And also natural disasters are devastating on local wildlife and on human beings. Ninth and final argument for the affirmative is ocean pollution. Uh, ocean pollution is something that is, again, happening all over the world, but China in particular is struggling with uh, oceanic pollution. So your uniqueness would be that things like plastic, oil spills, and artificial island building in the South China Sea are all activities from economic growth or in the quest of economic growth that are hurting China's ocean and coastline. So what happens when we do the topic? Well, when we prioritize the environment, China will stop doing things just for the sake of economic growth that hurt its oceans. 
And then the impact will just be reasons why the oceans are important. They're key to the fishing industry. They're key to marine wildlife. The ocean is such a huge part of our earth and it's a huge part of what makes it go round. Oh, one more argument. So 10th and final argument area for the affirmative is water pollution. Again, this is very similar to last year's policy debate topic, but last year's policy topic was about the United States and this topic is about China. For uniqueness, you're going to say that China's fresh water sources are getting polluted by industries that drive China's economic growth. So power companies and coal, like, so energy companies, uh, but also like product testing companies, clothing factories, uh, all of those different types of industries can hurt water in China. When we prioritize the environment, we will protect our water resources, even if it means costly regulations against businesses or fining businesses or shutting down industries or forcing them to change to more sustainable products, all of which will prioritize the environment but might hurt economic growth. The impact is that water is life. Water pollution is really bad. It causes disease, causes dehydration. It hurts agriculture. So there's lots of impacts out there about why fresh water is essential in every country, uh, but in China in particular. So now that we've talked about the affirmative, let's talk about potential negative arguments. These arguments are not really going to be counter plans because I think the problem is on this topic, the negative counter plan will have to be able to be responsive to the affirmative's prioritization argument. Because if the affirmative can show that they could prioritize the environment and do the counter plan at the same time, as long as the counter plan was not hurting the environment more than it was helping it, then it'd be pretty easy to take that down. I also think that counter plans on this topic will be much more effective if the affirmative is reading a specific plan, but that creates different problems for the negative. So these arguments are supposed to be mostly non counter plan arguments the negative could read, but they could be paired with a counter plan. So these are reasons not to prioritize environmental protection over economic growth in China. So I think the best position the negative can take will be one that says we should prioritize economic growth over environmental protection. There's going to be a temptation for the negative to every single round just say, why don't we do both? They're both important. Let's treat them equally important. But I think lots of judges will be convinced by the idea that it's impossible to treat two things as equally important. So if I, as the affirmative, can prove that we should treat things 1% stronger as far as the environment goes, then the negative loses. So if you are not giving direct reasons why we should not prioritize the environment, then I think the affirmative will have an easier time winning. I do think the topic literature is affirmative biased, which means that the negative needs to take the strongest position it can, not a weaker position. So here are arguments about why we should probably prioritize the economic growth of China over its environmental protection. Number one would be COVID lockdowns. This argument could be seen as a bit of a stretch, but the idea is that COVID was an environmental issue or was caused by an environmental issue, or at the very least, COVID lockdowns could be framed as environmental protection because emissions and other things that are bad for the environment decrease a lot when you have lockdowns because people aren't engaging as much polluting activity. So your uniqueness argument, whenever you're negative, should be that something going on right now is good uh, and that the affirmative is going to mess that up, which causes something really bad. Or on this topic, if you're making an argument that we should instead prioritize the economy, then you could say something bad is going on with the economy. So we need to focus on that and that that is really important. So that's what your contention should look like. So for this argument, your uniqueness would be that China has responded to COVID as an environmental concern with putting people in lockdowns. Uh, link is that when we prioritize the environment, we will continue to encourage lockdowns, which would be really bad. Or you say that when we prioritize the economy, we would end lockdowns, which you would argue is good. And then the impact is just why lockdowns are not great, because they cause unemployment, they cause mental health issues, and they cause poverty, while they're not really doing that good of a job at stopping the spread of COVID in the first place. This argument is not a regular contention. This is a critical argument. So if you're not interested in reading a critical argument, then you should not read this. But if you're a fan of critiques, I think there's a great critique baked into the topic. And again, you can see this from last year's water policy topic about water resource protection. 
So the link argument here, or what they did wrong, or how they're clashing with your philosophy, is that they are using the phrase environmental protection. And the word protection creates a relationship between protector and protected that is hierarchical, and where the protector is a hyper-masculine and the protected is feminized. Uh, which means that what they're doing or their language or their political strategy is rooted in the logic of domination, as it's called. It creates a hierarchy, and you will argue that that is bad on the impact, because when we treat it as a resource to be protected, that means that we are viewing ourselves above the environment, where we get to make decisions for the environment, uh, whatever we decide to do with it, which means that it's the same logic that justifies damaging the environment in the first place. So using that logic means that their political strategy is doomed to fail. So your alternative or what we should do instead is adopt an ethic of care relationship to the environment. And you can argue that you are still negating the resolution, even if this argument doesn't have much to do with the economy, because you are disagreeing with the idea that environmental protection should be a priority in the first place. And instead, we should focus on an ethic of care. Third argument, back to regular style LD arguments, is inequality. So you argue on this point that economic inequality is a really big problem in China. China is a huge country with hundreds of millions, if not over a billion people at this point. And the economic situations, depending on where you live in China, you might as well be living in two different countries. Many workers within China, as the uniqueness argument, are not getting paid more despite the fact that the country is getting more and more money. And these workers are working in really tough conditions for many hours, but they're not getting paid a living wage. So your link argument is that if we prioritize the environment, we will keep wages down because if wages go up, people will buy more stuff. When we buy more stuff, we have to make more stuff. When we make more stuff, we pollute the environment more. We have to use more natural resources. So prioritizing the environment would keep wages down. Or you say we need to prioritize the economy to increase wages. The impact is reasons why wages are important or wage growth is important as it decreases poverty, it increases life expectancy, it increases quality of life, all of those types of things. I guess you could say that the counter plan baked into this topic for the negative is they just argue the opposite, that instead we should prioritize economic growth. But I don't really see you needing to phrase that as a counter plan argument unless you want to. So fourth neg argument area would be energy or energy security. So the uniqueness here is that right now, China to fuel its growing economy is having to use polluting energy sources like coal and other fossil fuels to run its growing economy. So when we prioritize the environment, we are going to say we should stop using those energy sources. We're going to try and transition really quickly to renewable energy things like wind and solar and hydropower, but those energy sources uh, can't give as much energy in the status quo fast enough to give energy to all of the people in China that need it. So it's going to cause energy insecurity, which is bad on the impact because it can cause blackouts. It makes power prices go up, which is bad for like people living in poverty. And also you could argue that having uh, access to power and energy is crucial for the military. So that might hurt China's security. Fifth argument area that the negative could talk about is global markets. I think this is probably one of the strongest arguments on the topic for the negative, and that is the idea that China's economy affects every other economy in the world, because for most countries, China is their largest trade partner. So the argument you will make is that on uniqueness, China's economic growth is helping every other country's economic growth in the status quo. But when we prioritize the environment at the sake of economic growth or at the expense of economic growth, then that means that it's probably going to increase the cost of production. It will make goods and services more expensive in China. So when people try to trade with China, they'll have to pay more money for the same products, which increases the goods of or the cost of goods and services in every other country and when inflation and prices go up that exacerbates the impacts and the effects of poverty sixth negative argument area is housing so your uniqueness argument is that china's housing sector is going through a major crisis what happened was a bunch of people gave money to these huge housing companies in china to build them houses or build them apartment complexes and the housing 
market has just not delivered on building those things. So people are demanding that they get their money back. Fewer people are willing to try and get houses built in the first place. So this huge part of their economy is really struggling. Well, when we prioritize the environment, we don't try to help that struggling sector because you can say, oh, well, the housing sector is really bad for the environment because we have to clear land to build a house and building houses increases greenhouse gas emissions and destroys the local environment. So when we prioritize the economy, we can help try to rescue this housing construction industry. And the impact as to why it's important is that the housing market is necessary to fight issues like homelessness, as well as helping people get more jobs. Because if there's more housing in certain cities, people can move to those cities to be closer or to be able to get jobs in those cities. The seventh negative argument area concerns population growth, which I also think is a really strong argument. Basically, you say that the population in China is aging and it's not growing at the rate that it should be. So the median age is getting older and older. People are having fewer and fewer kids. And that's largely because a lot of the times they feel like they can't afford it. But people are also discouraged a lot of the time from having children because having children is framed as something that hurts the environment. So when we prioritize the environment, we're going to discourage population growth, which will make this issue worse. Or when we prioritize economic growth, we can increase China's population. The impact as to why increasing China's population is good is that it makes it so that we have more goods, more services, more innovation, more people means more workers, more workers means more businesses, more businesses means more goods and services being created. Eighth negative argument area is the idea that prioritization is unnecessary. I don't think that you should read this as a contention, but I'm sure that some people will anyways. I think this is better as an overview level response to your opponent's case. But the argument you're making is that we don't have to prioritize, as proven by right now, China is focusing on both, and both issues are getting better. China's focusing on its economy, and it's focusing on its environment. But the affirmative forces us to prioritize even when it's unnecessary, because that's what prioritization means. It's giving something more importance than another thing. So you argue that voting affirmative trades off with economic growth when we don't have to trade off with economic growth. And then you can just read any impact as to why economic growth matters, pretty much any impact from one of these other contentions. Economic growth in particular, you could argue decreases poverty, increases life expectancy, increases innovation of technology and products, it increases quality of life. I think that this is a core negative argument. I just don't think that it is a great contention level argument. Ninth argument for the negative is concerning transportation. So you say that transportation is essential or an essential part of economic growth. And right now, China is expanding its transportation infrastructure. So they're building more roads, more bridges, uh, more airports, more uh, railway systems, all of those types of things. Uh, so that people can move to and from easier, especially so that people living in rural areas of China can get jobs and travel to urban sectors more easily. The problem is that when we prioritize the environment, we are going to discourage that usage of transportation because the transportation industry, as we all probably know, is a huge polluter, huge contributor to global warming. And so we'll decrease, uh, we'll discourage increases in people getting cars or in using rural public transportation systems. The impact is all of those reasons about why transportation is important, because when we have transportation, we can get uh, higher quality jobs, higher quality education opportunities, and higher quality healthcare opportunities. Tenth and final argument for the negative concerns unemployment. You will argue that China is kind of facing an unemployment crisis right now, largely caused by the lockdowns, but also caused by other factors. When we prioritize the environment, we try to decrease the amount of uh, polluting industries, and polluting industries oftentimes take more jobs than more technologically advanced newer industries, so we're going to take away even more jobs, or when we prioritize the economy, we can fix this problem by increasing jobs, and the reason why that might mean we have to choose economic growth is that Unemployment can be good for the environment because people aren't buying as many new products. And if they're not buying as many new products, not as many are getting made. So not as many resources are getting used, not as much pollution is being put into the air. So it all kind of comes together to say China's experiencing a problem. And when you vote for the affirmative, the problem either becomes worse or when you vote for the negative, the problem gets solved. And then your impact is just that unemployment is really bad because it causes poverty. So 
At the end of this video, today we've gone through what the resolution of the People's Republic of China ought to prioritize environmental protection over economic growth is talking about, how you can frame the debate to be either having a value of morality or governmental legitimacy along with criterions for how to get there. We talked about 10 different affirmative arguments, which are all environmental issues China is facing that require a prioritization of protection over economic growth. And then we talked about 10 negative arguments that can disprove the idea that we should prioritize the environment over the economy. I think that this topic has a lot of potential. My biggest encouragement would be don't run to the middle try not to just argue that you can get both at the same time if we vote for you, because if every debate comes down to it's only a small prioritization versus why prioritize at all, that's going to be a very boring debate topic very fast. So don't be afraid to defend your side. Don't be afraid to do a lot of research and don't be afraid to ask questions. I hope that this was helpful and I will see you next time.